yes those who joined for this class today welcome to all of them and uh, physics is really interesting try to understand over a period of time what happened uh, people started just only solving is not even solving problems mugging solutions actually speaking in the beginning when i started teaching i knew of course that time it was subjective children were really testing the capacity of the teachers there all the time in the classes it was analysis not spoon feeding but since some this uh, lot of money has come the corporates uh, catch the students good students when they are young and teach them things in advance and remember the kind of method they follow only those people who were somehow identified by these corporates even by paying back money they actually do things not the others leave alone getting iit seats even engineering when they go they go with go with bad habits and uh, even there they don't perform well but remember physics is completely different you need to really do a lesson first you need to catch the main ideas of the lesson do some examples then increase the level of doing problems finally it is what it is it is you who should do the problem not the teacher will give you the solution so this many people have talked to already let me start the lesson for today look kinematics of a particle i have shown three pictures there galileo kepler and ampere did you hear this name ampere yes sir yes sir yes sir in measuring electricity electricity yeah, one ampere two ampere yes, sir electricity not, not all the same at the same time that is ampere's law you learned in 10th class right and look yes, at, i put this fellow's name here in this kinematics of particle can you make a guess why because these laws will come in kinematics formulas laws no no no, no don't worry yogi you are too enthusiastic uh, it's not like that and galileo and kepler of course possibly somebody will guess those who will heard lessons uh, my lessons previously will know why i am mentioning galileo and kepler here remember all this person yes, eight persons actually struggled so hard in their lives they struggled so hard in their lives basically all of them actually all of them struggled very hard galileo was imprisoned kepler did not have money to eat and ampere i'm not very sure i did not read his history yet but definitely the facilities were not like what we have today we are sitting somewhere and talking to so many people and you got the best uh, educators available online but that time even books were not available why even for us when we studied books were not many in the library we used to put an indent after 15 days you we used to get a book but now everything is available just with a click of a mouse click of a whatever all right so why these names will come back to you slowly but remember these names if i did not mention their names again you just talk to me sir why you did show the two names three names, three photos you showed you asked me all right yes yes in every lesson i'll be giving you the uh, synopsis first detailed synopsis we'll go one by one after one after the other once again if i missed one heading here you can remind me sir this heading was there you did not do something on this so it's very highly organized because we are writing exams but at the same time will show a lot of creativity in understanding the things look after finishing this chapter you are supposed to understand the concepts and applications of the following look concepts and applications so watch those two words so concept is not just some filler talk before starting a problem people talk a little here and there and this as a concept concept is very difficult to define right but let us say they are the meanings of the principles we talk meanings of the uh, main equations we write that's concept basically 
and applications to the following that is solving problems now there are in all 12 units we have 12 headings have given here the meaning of words kinematics and particles remember this is very very important my whole goal is towards problem solving believe me but when you enter into a new uh, subject you should define your terms otherwise you won't you, you cannot just do the things every word has a meaning it is it is a powerful uh, word actually which conveys a lot of meaning so we go like that the meaning of the words kinematics and particle remember every word is connected to a problem solving finally it's not that i would like to impress you people by talking this uh, story or that story all right and types of motion translation and rotational and motion in general many times this meanings translation motion means most of the times people say it is straight line motion which is not correct all right and then reference frame inertial frames and non inertial frames very very important any time you do a physics problem you are doing it in either one reference frame or either in another reference frame there's nothing like doing a problem just like that there's nothing like doing a problem on the paper hmm? i've got jokes about it right now I'll, I'll give you that later then distance and displacement vector average velocity vector and instantaneous velocity vector for most of you have done vectors already in vectors this these definitions are given by me already to some of you people there average velocity vector and instantaneous velocity vector average acceleration vector and instantaneous acceleration vector instead of saying acceleration i was using the words vector 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 like this okay and then equations of kinematics or a body moving in a straight line the constant acceleration in a straight line and problem solving some hundreds of problems we will solve under this these people do a little in the uh, in the 10th class as well and most of the teachers also spend a lot of time there but to leave the other things but definitely we'll start from what you know already all right uh, you already know something about this so kinematics all here we start basically equations of kinematics are particularly in a more general form and problem solving here we're talking about straight line and constant acceleration but particles may move in any any path circular path is exact path right and the acceleration need not be constant that's where our integration comes into picture so until here we may not require integration and if somebody who joined today if the, your integration is not good you can ask me i'll just give you some other time and tell you what to do or i'll send you a recorded lesson for an integration all right motion the gravity in one dimension that's what is projected up what is coming down like that motion the gravity in two dimension this is popularly known, popularly known as what projectile motion all right then resultant motion relative motion look the vector some vector difference that's where the whole thing is there and we'll be doing this in more the derivations will be given but We'll be doing some very good problems on this resultant motion relative motion. That is, motion in a river, velocity of one car with respect to another car, things like that. And the last one is kinematics of circular motion. So these are the 12 headings under which this kinematics of particle will be covered. It takes a lot of time to do it, but remember, like the mathematical tools we require, differentiation, integration, vectors, just for the sake of mass, this lesson is very, very important for the whole physics in the future. I'll tell you why this lesson is important for the whole physics as we keep talking. Right now, yes. Who is the person there? Newton. Newton. Yes. Newton. Yeah. Isaac Newton. Yes. Thank you. Now listen to me. The meaning of the words kinematics and particle, a particle, a point object or an object of matter without any internal structure without any internal structure look why did i show newton here he is a person who started what we call physics today before him galileo rene descartes 
and uh, who else uh, kepler they already made uh, physics somewhat better than what it was uh, there previously even in bc before christ aristotle talked about physics but that was no physics and dark ages in the middle nothing science no science happened but somewhere once again around uh, 14th century 15th century people started thinking a different way but at the person who started experimentation and putting physical events in mathematical form was basically galileo and then later kepler but he is the person who actually put everything in a proper scientific foundation scientific uh, he started a method called scientific method where you express physical events in mathematical form so the whole game of doing physics is expressing what watching physical events and putting them in mathematical form like if a body is dropped like this you will say it is coming because of gravity that statement can be told by anybody but putting that saying that it is it is following the law called s equals half gd square is what you call the mathematical representation of that theory following that right so he is the one who gave his newton's laws and you know in newton's laws what will you say a body is continued a body continues to be in the state of rest or uniform motion like that you say isn't it a body you say what is that body the body is nothing but a particle so newton's laws are about point objects or are objects of matter without any internal structure the way he defined particle he defined body was like that hmm? but do we really have a particle what about the particle all that will keep talking okay look particle idea of particle is an ideal radiation basically an approximation here have shown earth rotating about its own axis and as well revolving around the sun so for a particular purpose of revolution i'll consider the earth to be a particle that means for this elliptical path you know planets moving elliptical paths this is the elliptical path a point called center mass basically of earth somewhere there will be going in a simple path like this earth is rotating like this but as well revolving so for the revolution of earth i can consider i can, I can approximate the earth to be a particle i can think that the whole mass of earth is crumpled into a point mass at the center of mass of earth so because we will get a doubt no are come on where are the particles what do you mean by an object of matter without any internal structure how can a how can matter be without internal structure is always a question isn't it isn't it sir uh, therefore yes. we'll we will find out situations where bodies can be approximated to particles here for the rotation of earth around its own axis i cannot treat it like a particle isn't it for that the internal structure of earth is very important but for the revolution of the earth see when you say, actually should you not get a doubt like a student you'll say earth moves around the sun or some other planet moves around the sun in an elliptical path we say elliptical path is a simple path like that isn't it it's not a when some kind of a path like this if i consider one point here it is not going to go in elliptical path because it goes like this and as well will be dragged like that so path is very very complex for every different particle there on the earth but the center of the earth for example will go in this kind of a path so what is that i am trying to tell you though newton says a body a particle like that in his laws of motion we need to understand that depending on the situation depending on our requirement bodies are approximate to be particles not they are really particles okay all right so what is the statement i mentioned here bhuvana for the rotation of earth i cannot earth and but for the revolution i can approximate to be a particle yes is it yes it continue and here for example what is the time showing here 
Can you tell me? An eclipse. What eclipse? Is? Eclipse. Lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse. That's correct. Here, I cannot treat Earth like a particle. The internal structure comes into picture, isn't it? What, Gauri? Yes, are you listening? Yes, sir. Yeah. You you are free to talk in this class. Believe me. Only thing is, all of the all of you don't talk at the same time. There is a provision to raise the hand, isn't it? There. Huh? So you can do that and speak. Here, previously, in the previous slide, what did we say? When we say Earth is moving around the sun in elliptical path, we actually mean to say that a point called center of mass. We'll talk about center of mass later anyway. It's nothing big actually. A point where you can think the whole mass is supposed to be concentrated. But here, when I want to explain an eclipse, I cannot say that Earth is a particle. Array, if I say Earth is a particle, can you explain the shadows? Huh? No, sir. We cannot. No, sir. No, sir. We cannot. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, yes. In the whole Newtonian mechanics, it was like that. Some big bodies were taken to be particles depending on the requirement and situation. But later, once people understood that matter is made up of tiny, tiny, tiny elements, first it was thought atoms. Then people said, no, 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 atom is the, not, the, not the final uh, unit, but there are particles inside the atom. Tell me, can you just see this very interesting thing? This keeps coming again and again in our discussion. Uh, this is the nucleus, right? Huh? Yeah. And uh, these are the electrons. The whole thing is one atom. Remember, this distance between the electron and the nucleus is very large compared to the nuclear size. Actually, look, it's wrong. People all the time put some circle and put neutrons and protons. There's nothing like a circle like that, nothing like a surface like that. Only these things just are close together and they form a spherical shape. So what are these things here? Huh? Protons. Protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons. And these proton and neutron is once again quarks. Quarks, yes. The proton has up quark, up quark, down quark like this. This is what people know. Electron is indivisible. Their size is very, 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 very small. Very, very small. Okay. And these things will be called particles now. But even electron is supposed to have a small uh, size and shape. Try to understand. It's very, very small, 10 to the power minus, uh, minus 16, minus 17, I don't remember exactly meters. But even that has got a size. But for the revolution like that, the size doesn't matter. So what I was trying to tell you, in the mechanics, real big bodies can be considered to be particles, but there are also particles like this. Particles is the word used even for these things now. What? Very, very tiny specks of matter, tiny units of matter also can be called particles. And remember, even photon is a particle. It is a proton, which is made up of even more smaller particles called quarks. Up quark, up quark, down quark like this. Neutron is also made up of Three more quarks. So ultimately, the idea do you have now? What is that? We've got some big body like this, some body. This is made up of molecules, we say. These molecules consist of atoms. Atoms consist of nucleus and electrons. Electrons you cannot divide. Nobody has shown that electron can be further divided. But nucleus once again has neutrons and protons. Neutrons once again have quarks. So this is the picture of matter now. All right, but these are called elementary particles, which are so small that we call them particles. Okay, right. Now, of course, photon is a different particle. It doesn't have a mass, try to understand. Whereas all these electrons, all these things, neutrons, quarks, they've got what we call as mass, but this photon fellow has no mass. It will be always moving. We say that its rest mass is zero. All this you learn even in chemistry. Any question here? I'll be waiting. But why did they bring all this here, children? Can you tell me? 
I was talking about particles. Part. When you go to the quarks are not further divided. Yeah, which are not further divided. Sir. Yes. So proton or photon, no, sir. Proton is different from photon. Photon is energy unit, radiation energy unit. It doesn't have a mass. Proton is something different, which is there inside the nucleus. Yes. All these things will be nowadays called particles, and we are going to deal with them in modern physics in twelfth class. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. Now, sir. Yes. Sir, then for a body, when we consider the center of mass, what will be considered, sir? Here. For for whom? For the for a body. No, for any body or for the smaller particles we are talking. For any body. For any body. Uh, if we consider the center of mass. Yes. Will we be considering a particular molecule? No, nothing. No molecule, nothing. Just a point. Okay. Just a point. That point can be even say, for example, if a zigzag, I mean, some very funny shape of a body. If I have, I just shall show it. That's exactly what I want you to understand. Say some kind of a body I have like this. All here we've got mass. Center mass of this may be here. You understand? This is a body. Actual body is here, Amma. Uh, yes, sir. Here. Center mass may be here. So all this mass I'll assume to be here. And that we call as a particle. Hmm? Okay, sir. Right. So at the center of mass, there need not be any mass. Try to understand. In, in fact, say for example, a regular body, if I take, at the center of mass, there will be one particle, but that particle is not our uh, center of mass. You understand? All this, you will think, you just crumple that into I mean, a structure which has no internal structure and say that it's a point, a geometrical point called center of mass. Right? But anyway, I'm coming to that. So, yes, any question? Shreya, Gaurvi, Divyansh, from you. There's no chat. Chat, of course, I won't allow here because that will disturb others, but you are ready to talk. All right. Now, for the translation. Sir, part, yes. Sir, uh, we didn't discuss about kinematics. Particle I mean, what is kinematics? Particle only we are discussing now. Where is kinematics business? Hmm? You want it? Okay. Have patience. Have patience. It is. I told you already, the real physics starts here, Volke. Just listen to me. And remember, everything, whatever I am talking, I will be using again. Nothing is uh, I mean, uh, left uh, just for the sake of talk. Hmm? All right. So I was just trying to give you a feel for a particle. See, we'll be dealing with electrons later, we'll be dealing with protons later, we'll be dealing with photons later. Huh? That they are more real to a particle than our big bodies like say for example this home have this is not a particle actually speaking but for certain reasons i can call it a particle but electron is almost near to a particle because its size is very very small very 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 small all right so i just gave you some particles real big bodies rigid bodies let me say this phone is a rigid body for example the distance between the two points of the phone doesn't change if i pull it so this is also considered a particle, but the center of mass. But somewhat, if, if there are anything which are nearer to particles, they are the elementary particles. What? Electron, proton, neutron, atom also can be considered a particle, alpha particle. So these words will keep coming again. Particle, 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 every time keeps coming again in the uh, next uh, uh, modern physics, basically. And chemistry, you always deal with them. Isn't it? Whole of chemistry is what? Chemical reactions are what? Tell me, it is the interaction between the outermost electrons, isn't it so? And electrons are particles. Anyway, now where do we consider a body to be a particle? Look, for the translational motion of a body, we can treat it like a particle. Now, I'll ask uh, Gaurvi from Una. Tell me, child, what is translation motion? So when a body moves in straight line? No better. Look, that's not correct. Anybody else? 
know that's what i mean by the misconceptions but tell don't do other if they are wrong let it be wrong i'll correct it but uh, feel free to speak huh? right and here sriya yes sir what is the translation motion so the particle mm. move from one place to another with certain motion transit from one Moving place to one, yes to move from one place to another place is correct yes, sir but not, right. not in a straight line sir it has some certain path or will it be along a defined path look i'll tell you the particle changes the position of course that's for sure it moves from one position to another position without any change in its orientation in space it can be straight line motion it can be a curvilinear motion also the body can go just on it i'll just show it look i'll put a block here this block is moving like this it's going there or i'll throw a body but when i throw a body remember as i throw of course i'll draw it in advance this line i'll throw one body like this while throwing in the middle it is not spinning that's what you mean by the orientation in space does not change it's not spinning of course some spinning generally happens when i throw a body but here i'm ignoring the spinning of the body so how do you define translation motion i'll write here i'll put this up later in the youtube for a private viewing but you can as well write how do you define translation motion if a body changes if a body changes its position changes its position without any change in its orientation in space without any change in its orientation in space in space it is said to be making translation motion said to be making translation motion and remember it can be a straight line motion or we can call it a rectilinear motion or it can be curvilinear motion both are translational only the word translational is for this translocation transplantation of heart means you move remove from here and put it there right transfer transformation right so it is change of position that's all but the change of position can be through a straight line or through a curved line but the orientation space should not change that is the key word but how do you how do you understand this for that i'll tell you something nice look at this that's what i mean by saying that everything should be finally put into mathematical words now i'll tell you i'll put body axis i'll fix axis to the body here x axis y axis let me see in a translatory motion the body axis remain parallel to their initial position all the time these are called body axis if x is like this x will be once again like this only even here if i put body axis what do you mean by body axis children i'm fixing this axis two rods let me put to this, this way that way if the body axis remain all the time parallel to their original position then you say the body is moving in a translation motion and if this orientation space changes this x and y axis move because they are fixed to the body now this is how you really define a translation motion so if, if you say it is a straight line motion that's wrong it can be straight line or it can be curved line but 
as the body moves from one point to another point, it should not spin. To put it in normal terms, it should not spin. Then you say it is translated. Any questions is what can Sir? Yes? Sir, what is it by orientation, sir? Change of position of body? I written, if a body changes its position without any change in its orientation in space. Look, without in its orientation in space. How is it aligned in the space? And that will, how do you, and how do you know that? I, for that, I put body axis. For example, I'll show you here. I, anyway, when I show that uh, rotatory motion, I'll show you that. Like for example, and just wait. What is orientation? You'll further notice. I mean, in the next uh, slide. Okay, I'll, sir. But I told, you, I told you mathematically, if the body axis remain parallel to their original position, I told you. Why don't you look at that first, sir? Uh, sir, about the particle concept you taught us uh, just a moment earlier. Yeah, Divyan, tell me. Yeah, according to that, uh, means uh, it was defined as uh, it doesn't have any internal structure, right? Yeah. So, uh, any kind of motion a particle does, will that be a translation motion? Exactly. That's why we said no. For the translation motion of a body, we can treat it like a particle. Okay, sir. Thanks. Uh, yeah, why I'll tell you? Just a minute. Yeah. Rightly, you remember the answer. Good. Yeah. Now, why why I can I can take this block as a particle? I'll tell you. Look at this. This block is there. This moved like this. See, this end mode, how much say, for example, some 10 centimeters, the ions. And this end also moves 10 centimeters. The middle moves 10 centimeters. Any point you take that moves 10 centimeters. Every point has the same velocity. Every point has the same acceleration. Do you follow my point? Yes, sir. sir. Right? Therefore, I need not bother about the shape and size of the object. That yes, means, sir. For the motion, you do not have to worry whether the back part is moving uh, with more velocity or the front part is moving with more velocity. In that case, if you find out that case, those cases, you can think that the body's mass is simply crumpled into a point. Is it all right? Huh? Yes, sir. Good. Right. Sir, by this we can say that it does, Earth does not move in a translation motion, no, sir. Earth is moving translation motion for the Revolution, revolution, not for, not for rotation. 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 It will spin, hmm. sir. Till it has got two motions. It actually has a general motion which is divided into two parts: rotation motion plus translation motion. Translation motion. Right? That's a general yes. motion. You should say yes. it's a combination of translation plus rotation. Rotation. Right. So this, 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 this. Did you catch Sriya, the whole thing? Like. Since every particle on the body has the same property, I need not worry about the shape and the size of it. Size of it. Therefore, so, I say a body moves means that's all. A car moves, a body moves, you move, I move. And of course, in practice, there is some other motion uh, with that, but this is an ideal isn't it? Like if I, of course, isolation we don't do because uh, we want to make things simple. There are cases like that. For example, if I push some phone like this, every point has the same velocity. No? So I can think, think, instead of saying that phone is moving, I can say particle is moving. All right? Yes. What I mean to say that when a phone moves or a cup moves, it really doesn't make a difference. All right. So, so can we say that any particle of the object is taken into consideration? Uh, not really, because there will be certain other things. That's why we put it at the center of mass. Huh? Okay, sir. Right. Okay, we'll go for the next page. Yeah, Newton's laws are basically written for particles. This is not many people even bother about it. So, what are the Newton's laws? Can you tell me for a while? Of course, we'll come back to these laws again. I'll just mention it for a while. First is what? Every uh, body continues. Every body means every particle, actually. People put a word body there because particle looks, body looks more, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, popular. Particle is a scientific word, right? So, but remember, it actually should have been written as what? Every particle moves, you know? Tell me. 
a particle will be at rest or moves in a straight line with a constant speed unless unless an external an force, force acts on it and that and is the first law and what is second law physical same mean to a the rate of change of momentum of a body we say is particle one second what is it particle the rate of change rate of change in momentum body will directly proportional to the applied force and will be taking place in the direction of the force that will write in many ways f external equals ma we write or f external equals dp bar by dt rate of change of momentum change of momentum we call it instantaneous force yes sir payoshni parag joshi how are you you went out the meeting okay and newton's third law will be every action every action has equal and opposite reaction opposite reaction remember yeah but bodies will exert action reactions like this when they are in touch for example and sometimes even when they are not in touch also they exert but once again that will be between two particles so i want to just tell you that yes newton's laws are basically written for particles later people extended that for system of particles and later people extended that for uh, i mean uh, what do you call uh, big bodies all right yeah when you write newton second law for earth or something else you will treat it like a particle actually i'll tell you earth is here moon is going around it so we write the force between those two as what g mass of earth mass of moon by r square what is this mass of earth and mass of moon and what is r is the distance between their centers that means for the revolution of a moon around the earth i am taking the whole thing to be there at the center and writing like a particle but of course there should be justification to make them particles but that will come slowly all right yes what is this rotating motion look i can put my axis like this body axis look this is my some axis like x axis this may be my y axis this may be my z axis for example z axis coming out of the pan now when the these are fixed to the fans leaves like that now when the fan moves what will happen your axis move that's what you mean by changing the orientation Do you follow this? Yes, sir. You can go for yes, another sir. picture if you want. What is this? CD. CD. A disc. Now let me put axis. This is x-axis. This is fixed to the body. This is my y-axis. Oh, yeah. As this is moving, the x-axis and y-axis do they remain there? No. Are you follow? I am saying you are fixing x-axis. Means you actually fix one metal. Poke here, another one here. You put. If the CD is moving like this, this will come here, right? Isn't it? That will come there. This is what you mean by changing in orientation. That's what. That's what you mean by in physics. You should put everything in mathematical terms. So tell me now. Uh, do you understand what is orientation in space? How that is oriented in space, and if that changes means how should I know? I'll put. body axis if the body axis remain all the time like that the orientation is not changing the body axis are like this and the body moves like this sliding so body axis do not turn so that is orientation is not changing orientation is when the orientation is not changing that is translate all right yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and when the orientation changes it is rotation rotation orientation alone changes but position does not change so what how do you refine rotatory motion if tell me if the orientation no. of the if body the body's orientation alone changes in space orientation alone changes 
without change of position. Rotatory motion? Yes, without change of position. It is called rotatory motion. Now, any questions, Srihit? Tell me. No, sir, clear. Hmm. Sir, when the, uh, when the body is orientation and the position also changes, then it is called general motion, sir. General motion, or it's a combination of translation plus rotatory. rotatory motion. And most of the motions are like that, practical motions, isn't it? Huh? All right. Can I get you children? Yes. Please sir, in a mathematical sir. way, can we say that it is just the rotation of axis? Is the rotation of axis. What do you mean by what can be said as rotation of axis? Yeah. Sir, so when the y and x axis here we take them x here y I and the no, ma. Here I am using a special word called body axis. That is very very important. Hmm? Okay. That means you practically are attaching axis to the body. To know whether the orientation is changing or not. Not. Yes. Sir. Uh, if the body axis remain all the time as they were initially uh, throughout the motion, there's no orientation in orientation is changing. But if they somewhere in the middle you see that body axis are changing, that so this actually a deliberately I put a CD symbol. If it if it is rotating, can you even recognize it? If it goes at a high speed, we don't even know whether it is rotating or not, isn't it? Yes, sir. And if I put yes. marks like this, I'll definitely know that it is rotating. So to recognize the rotation, I need to fix real access to the body. That's what is very, very important. All right, children? Can yes, I sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Now we'll continue. Uh, this is the general motion. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now this is ball is rolling. This ball is rolling. Rolling. Remember, everything of this will come again. We will discuss all this put in mathematical form and do that. This is spinning and as well moving like this. And look, this fellow is throwing the bat. There's one point here which is going in a parabolic part. That's called center of mass. Is also spinning at the same time. So there's a combination of what? Translation of center of mass plus rotation about center of mass. Center of mass. So for the sake of translation, I, have not, I don't require to know the shape and size of the bat there. I'll say the bat's mass is all concentrated here for this parabolic motion. And for this, we write F equals M A. Do you believe me? F equals M A C M. You should write for big systems like this, big bodies like that. F equals M A C M. Will write for whom? For the center of mass, not for the whole body. When you say a car is moving with an acceleration two meters per second square in kinematics, we do that many times. What does it mean? You know. It is the center mass of car. Because you know, cars, wheels move, the car as a whole moves, right? Isn't it? So the motion is not a very simple motion, it's a complex motion. But there, just for the sake of translation of car, I can think that the whole car's mass is there at the center of mass, and I consider mass of car to be thousand kilograms, but a point mass when I apply it equals MEC. So particle has so much meaning, children. I'm talking about particle only. Remember, everything of this is important for understanding physics and applying physics. Nothing is told without any purpose. Do you follow? Hmm? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So, any questions, children, here? Okay, I'll continue. Yeah, yes. What is kinematics? 
kinematics is the study of motion of objects without any reference to without any reference or requirement of force acting on them and also any reference to their masses we don't worry about force we don't worry about mass of the object but still we will be able to discuss the motion of the bodies motion of the particles that is what you mean by kinematics hmm? somebody joked kinematics is without ma hmm? if you remove ma it becomes kinetics of course that is that talks about force also but here Though we have MA here, we don't talk of mass and mass into A. That's what you mean by kinematics. Hmm? But how do we do that? All that I'll come back. See, you've, you've done a few problems in kinematics already, many of you. Did we ever talk of mass of the body there? No. And did we, did we talk about the force there? No, sir. No. no. So, when these two things are not there, that's what you call kinematics. And I'll talk more of this as we keep moving ahead. Who laid the foundations of kinematics? First, it was Galileo and then later Kepler, who laid the foundation for this branch of mechanics called kinematics. This ultimately led Newton to formulate the whole set of laws of mechanics after defining mass and force. This Newton fellow is the culprit actually. If we did not do define this mass and force, we wouldn't have had physics for the ITJ exam. Hmm? Do you understand what I mean by that? The whole physics started with defining mass and force. Take Newton's principia. First, we will define things. We will define mass. We will define momentum. Then we will come to force. So after these two ideas are put into Galileo's and Kepler's ideas, a whole branch of physics opened up. Okay. But what is kinematics? I told you already, you study the motion. You study the motion which way? One is from experiment. That's what? Who? Galileo and Kepler did. Piosni are going out all the time. Galileo and Kepler actually did experiments of course kepler did not do the experiments that's a big story i'll come back to that but he used the experiment results of somebody else these are the two main persons or the uh, persons who whom newton referred to as the joints i if i learned something i stood on the shoulders of the joints was newton's statement these are the two persons on the shoulders of whom newton stood and the what you call started a branch called mechanics which actually is the beginning of mechanics believe me this mechanics is for that reason very very important believe me very very important the whole laws of physics are laid down in mechanics though the newton's uh, laws change later newton's laws are not applied for small bodies and high velocities still the beginning will be with this okay but anyway Newton and this Kepler and Galileo did experiments. They did not know the cause of motion, should not say actually, the cause for change of motion. People always say wrong words. Force causes motion is not a good statement. Do you follow my point? Chillen, what did I say? Force? Causes Don't say force causes motion. motion. Yes. Force causes motion is not a good statement, I tell you. What is the correct Engine. statement? Force changes motion is the correct statement. Any objection for this, children? No, this sir. comes with a wrong idea for uh, uh, human uh, intellect. We all the time think that the natural state of the body is rest. We all the time think the natural state of the body is rest. Alexander's guru thought that. Who is him? Alexander's guru. Tell me. History. Sir, conqueror of the world. <laughs> I was asking. 
teacher of Alexander. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, that is Aristotle. He thought that natural state of the body is at rest and force changes it. Remember, first of all, we know by this time that motion and the rest are relative terms. That motion or rest which, which will change if there is a force. If there is no force, the body will be there all the time with respect to some reference frame. A body will be moving in a straight line with a constant speed with reference to some other frame. So what force does is what? It changes the state of rest or state of motion. Both are equal. Motion and rest are unequal terms, believe me. All right. So force causes motion is not correct. What is correct? Force changes, force changes motion. Changes motion. Yeah. How, how that makes a big difference in solving problems, I'll show you. Every word, every word which I speak here is actually for that reason. All right. Now, yes. Uh, I told you already, kinematics means you study the motion of bodies without referring to mass and force. But did anybody do that like that? Yes. First it was Galileo and then Kepler. And what did they do? I'll come. Now. But before coming to what Galileo and uh, Kepler did, this fellow is also important for us. Did I tell you in the beginning that, yes, there were three uh, photos given there, pictures given there, Galileo and uh, Kepler and this man. Who is he? Ampere. 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 Who had given the name kinematics? I'm giving, telling you, this is the fellow who gave kinematics at a later stage. He's, he's, much later after uh, Galileo and uh, Newton and everybody. He coined the word kinematics. Just one of you please read what, what whatever he said. He yes, wrote, sir. Yeah, there you read. So he wrote, this science must encompass everything that can be said of the different kinds of motion independently of the forces that can produce them. So, kinematics is the word given by this man called Ampere. Actually, children, are you interested in robotics? Any of you? Actually, mathematics people don't say it is not the branch of physics, it is a branch of uh, mathematics. Say, because a lot of mathematics is used in the robotics. A lot of kinematics is used in robotics. Geometry and mathematical equations are there. It's all, remember, a robo, it's a, what kind of motion does uh, the robo parts have, tell me? Tell me. Rotation and translation. Think of a robo in your mind now. Forget about that, all that robes around the robe and the flesh or whatever. Just think of the, what? The hands and the hinges. So when a robo moves, what is happening, you know? Kinematics is happening. So very, very important kin is kinematics if you are thinking of any time in future talking of robotics. Robotic arm, kinematics of forward motion, reverse motion, all that will be without talking about forces, do you know? Geometry and uh, uh, algebra will be used, a lot of it. So kinematics that will be very, very important in the engineering application. Right? So finally, yes, this is not my statement, it is that great force and ambient statement. What is it? The science this science means kinematics must encompass everything that can be said of different kinds of motion independently of the forces that can produce those motions. But change the motion doesn't matter. So kinematics means remember a robo, that's all. Hmm? You do not imagine a robo with only the skeleton structure. The hands are moving, that means there's a rotation, but it's also moves forward. So it's a combination of translation plus rotation. And you'll talk about the angles, you'll talk about the velocity, you'll talk about the acceleration, you'll talk about the position, nothing, nothing about the force. All right. Okay. We'll continue. Can you see the time? Okay. All right. Just a minute. Just a little more. I'll talk. But before that, let me see these uh, students from other places who are all there. I want to know. Uh, this is the I'll go for this. Yeah, Gauri, I could talk. Tilak, no. 
Vaishnavi, Bhagavadam, Sudesh, Rishida, Yogi, Sai, Sri. Divyansh is there. Okay, Sri, Sri Hit is there. Then, uh, Sreya is there. Sreya Dhamma, you're not speaking. Neha, no. Usha, okay. Sai, Nihe. K, this K, I don't know. K should be known to us later anyway. Hmm. Venkat Kishore, of course. Okay. All right. Hmm. All right, children. Hmm. Yeah, Galileo's contribution, Kepler's contribution, all this, of course probably will be taking a lot of time from here actually our problem solving starts but remember today's lesson had what we simply started the lesson called kinematics of particle until now we spent time only in understanding two words kinematics and particle and in what all situations we treat bodies like particles i told you already in mechanics or in the newtonian mechanics we actually deal with big bodies only but big rigid bodies we deal with. Here, Rishita has come just now, I don't know. Uh, in, in here, when big bodies are moving, and uh, if all the particles, the big bodies are having same properties, like change of position, velocity, acceleration, then we need not worry about the body's shape and size. We can consider that to be a particle. But where will be a question? For that we said there will be a point called center of mass. Center of mass is a big lesson in future. So that's why we are developing the ground for all those things later. So all the big bodies can be put at a point called center of mass, and Newton's laws will be written for this particles. As far as the Newtonian mechanics is concerned, as far as big bodies is concerned. But later we'll also come to a situation where there are really tiny, tiny matters of objects, which are which are almost like particles. This, this is a big idealization, making a big block as a particle is a big idealization. But there, talking about electrons, protons, and the photons as particles is very reasonable because they are very, very small. All right. And then after that, we said there are situations where a same body can be treated like a particle. Sometimes it need not be treated like a particle. That is, Earth for its revolution can be treated like a particle, but for the rotation, no. All right. And for an eclipse formation, you cannot treat Earth as a particle or Moon as a particle. All right. Then we said a particle goes only in a translation motion. The particle cannot spin. The particle has no internal uh, structure so that it can spin. So translation motion is the one a particle makes, and when it changes from one position to another position, without Spinning, of course. Real bodies, of course, don't, should not spin. Only then we can make them into particles. So real bodies, they don't spin, but go from one point to another point. We can say that the whole body is a particle in the center of mass and follows a simple path like a straight line, a circular path, a, a parabolic path, something like that. Or a logarithmic spiral. Hmm? Like when, two, when three particles stand on a uh, at the corners of a triangle and keep following each other. I told you to some of you that it goes in a spiral path, logarithmic spiral. We call it logarithmic spiral equation will derive sometime later. Believe me, physics is all mathematics finally. Okay, and then we define kinematics. Kinematics is study of motion without worrying about force and mass. But can we really study the motion like that? We can because Galileo did it. Kepler did it, but that was not full physics that time, right? But after Newton came and introduced, after Newton came and introduced uh, the ideas of mass and uh, force, then the whole branch called physics flourished. That means kinematics is the beginning of physics, try to understand. That time, people had some ideas of forces, but they could not define it. They had, they, they had the ideas of mass, but they could not define it. They were dealing with it. But the discussion of physical events was based on experimentation only. That's where the kinematics came in, right? 
and what is Galileo's contribution and how does it help us in solving few problems and what is Kepler's contribution, all this tomorrow will take up. All right, children, that is the summary of the lesson. Any questions before we end up today's session? Gaurvi? Yes, sir. Uh, did you like the lesson? Yes, sir. Like, huh? Yeah. Right. Okay, ma'am. Uh, okay, now I'll, anybody from here in Hyderabad, will you have any question? Payosni, Payosni. What Payosni? Marathi me baat karo jada. Hmm? Say good evening to all in Marathi. Let me hear. Okay, all right. Maybe you are shy in the first class. Don't worry. Slowly you will start speaking. And if there are no doubts to be asked, I'll just uh, end the session for today and we'll come back with more information tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we'll meet again tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye, sir. Good night, sir. Good night.